come out of her, my people. All truth is not kind here. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Come out of her, my people.
And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, but showing mercy to the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor a stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rest of the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. You getting spirits on me now? You what? You trying to hold the mic still? That, that how you do it? Get spiritual? Huh? He didn't look spiritual to y'all. He usually don't do that, do he? He does like. I must be seeing from behind then. I'm a Johnny come lately. Shalom. All right. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all things. We come to you in the precious name of Yahshua Hamashiach. Uh, we thank you, glorify, and honor you. We do humbly ask. We need you this morning. We need our understanding open. We need the Holy Spirit to help us here this morning with this teaching. So speak to us, each and every last one of us, those that are here, those that are looking and watching and listening by way of the Internet. Uh, bless their ears. We give you glory for all things. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Let me see you, saints. First of all, let me give a shout out to my enemies. How are y'all doing? I'm glad that I'm an important part of your life and that you can't live without me. It's nice to know to be needed, isn't it? Hmm? What do you think about that, Steve? At least I'm loved. Hmm? Some of you can't live a life without me. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Glory to the king. Jesus said you'll be hated of all men for my name's sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Israel, we greet each and every last one of you by way of the internet out there who are uh, joining with us today this Shabbat. Um, let me go ahead and we, we're going to be in a teaching. Now, we know that we have atonement. I'll be coming up nightfall. Um, let me make it simple for a lot of you people who still don't understand times, the dates, and seasons to make it simple for you. It starts Monday night at nightfall. All right, we're going to have a service um, Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. Hallelujah. And it's a proclaimed fast throughout all of Israel. Now, if you're a Christian, you keep doing what you're doing. Keep eating your swine's flesh and sacrificing the idols because it's not for you. These are the feasts of the Most High Yah. And they belong to him and his people. Hallelujah. He's given his people that. Hallelujah. You know, I have been spending a lot of time this week answering um, a lot of people who are coming out of Christianity, who are actually discovering uh, what the religion is all about. Um, and I still, I, I use the same Bible that they use. And, you know, we, we grow from year to year. We should never get stagnant. You know, we should continually keep increasing in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as the years go by. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. And we should do that uh, continually. So you shouldn't be the same person that you are. I know how we are as Americans. We're comfortable. 
when we don't have to change Amen. unless we facilitate that change ourselves. When it comes to changing for the most high or something like that, we fight, we kick. If you want to change something, no problem. No, no problem. That is a remarkable attitude for somebody who allegedly, supposedly, is a servant and don't belong to themselves. Is that not what the book teaches? Yes, sir. You're no longer your own? Amen. Let's prove his boast. Come on. How many people have been purchased by the blood of Jesus? Then you don't own yourself no more. Uh oh. What do you got to say about that? Well, Pastor Dow, don't be well in me. That's just a true statement. You've been bought with a price. By the precious blood of the Messiah, the Christ. Then he teaches you to therefore glorify him in your bodies. Y'all hearing it? <clears throat> well, it, it seems like that the, the attack is warranted because it, unless you're doing something, you can't be uh, a good disciple of the Most High. Amen. Is that right? Amen. You can't be a disciple of the Most High. You may want to turn that thing down over there. Um, but I, I got, I need for y'all of you to go ahead and grab a hold of your pens and your papers and everything else because you're going to need what I'm getting ready to go over here today. What I'm going to talk about today is very unpopular. As a matter of fact, it's never, you have never heard it spoken about in any arenas or any churches or synagogues or mosques or wherever you're at, except at a place like this. We're going to go in depth because, you know, the war is warranted. Now, besides the, uh, the destabling of the economy and uh, people not knowing what's going on because they can't see the forest for the trees I'm sorry to tell you but next year is going to be worse than this year and the year out there is going to be worse than the year before that and the year after that is going to be worse than the year before that and the year after that is going to be worse than the year before that we're looking at at least 20 something years before the thing even starts turning around Hmm? Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, sir. 20 plus years. Because we got so much debt. The country does. Amen. How you fathom $64 trillion? Hmm? How you do that? I have a hard time counting to a thousand. Y'all, y'all getting this thing? You know, over the years, everybody always accused me of being, let me, let me use this word, pessimistic. Now, I wonder, since that I'm accused of being a pessimistic, you follow me? What do you say now that everything I've been talking about is here? That's a realist. And I'm saying the things not to injure or hurt us, but it's not going to change reality. The fundamentals are still the same. Amen. You can't do the same things you always done and expect change. Oh, sir. Those of you who own silver out there, you're gonna see a, you're gonna see a couple of zeros behind that. Let me see, at least one zero for sure. Yeah, Pastor Dow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember I told people that Walmart was gonna be the distribution center for the New World Order. Looks like it's taking place too, don't it? They're in every little small town. They scattered all across the United States and the world like you wouldn't believe. We're going to find out who's a man of y'all and who's not the army. Amen. We're going to find out. Oh, QE3 has done messed us up really bad. You can't see it yet because they have not circulated this thing yet. You understand what I mean? We go out and we buy goods buy services and it's costing us more Amen. go to the gas pump it costs you more Amen. Elder Doug do you remember what that gas pump said yesterday when we pumped some diesel in that truck in that other truck four dollars and nine cents a gallon we know we filled up that one truck we filled up the other truck and we, you know what I mean we're not paying attention you know just doing like America's doing 
just pumping away. Then the thing stopped at 169 and a penny. Brother Shane said, you want me to round it up? <laughs> hmm? And you know how we like going to and fro too, don't you? How many times you want to keep going to and fro when it's four, five, six? You know, over in Europe, they're paying seven, eight dollars a gallon. They pay by liters. How much is gas over in England? A liter? It is liters. So we're looking at, what would you say, one pound 39 cents? One pound 39 cents? One, two, two, three, four, five. We're looking at close to $6 a gallon. $6 a gallon. Now, most of you Americans, you don't know metric system and stuff because the world all revolves around you and, and everything that you know, and, and it, there's not a big world out there. So you can go back to sleep. Every once in a while, I try to use his head besides something as, you know, just to have hair on top of my head and a hat rack. And I've learned over the years that if you have opportunity to gain knowledge and wisdom, you need to get it as quick as you can and as much as you can because it's not the things that you um, know that destroys you. It's the things you, that you don't have no interest in. It doesn't warrant your time. You know what I mean? It's like I, I got a lot of people uh, now paying attention to it. Only two or three people out there. You know what I mean? They're supposed to talk about me. Ain't y'all know they're supposed to talk about me? But what's amazing is, is that I'll get people that will spend more time and energy listening to that mess and garbage than they will blog talk on Friday night, scripture study, streaming, Shabbat service, and then blog talk again with the brother and myself. And, but no, we'll go gravitate over that. You know the reason why, don't you? Flies let out a certain stench. See, and everybody, first thing, oh, wait a minute, Pastor. Now, you wait a minute. It's hard trying to get you online because you don't understand what your flesh gravitates to. You have not questioned yourself, begin to question yourself why your flesh gravitates to mess. And then you wonder why you're in a mess spiritually. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See, it's a painful truth, but you know, no matter what, force yourself to say amen. amen. If it's a lie, just sit there and don't say nothing. But if it's the truth, oh me, oh my. It's still the truth. See, it's hard trying to purify people when we want things our way. But everybody don't receive the, the truth the same way that a lot of people do. A lot of people sit there like with a plate. I just want to know what's going to help me out. Amen. Isn't that true? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> We're in trouble. Amen. As a country, we are in major trouble. Big time trouble. True. And you have, should have seen the trouble brewing. You notice that since 2008, your gas done doubled in price? And where does it go once you get paid? It goes in the gas tank, don't it? Amen. Hmm? Now everybody out there going to be forced to stack up like sardines. Here in America, we used to make fun of the Mexicans. That's what Americans do. They make fun of the Mexicans because they all stack up and they all used to living together. Now, what are you going to do when all of you are like that? Because when Ben Shalom Bernanke turned around and said that he was going to buy $40 billion of mortgage-backed securities every single month, translation, we're going to buy all the real estate in this country. Who? The Federal Reserve. You mean a, a bunch of foreign bankers? Yeah, yeah people who don't even, who, who are not even part of our government? Yeah. Why? Because our government go to them for money. And where are they going to get this money? Can you reach out and see if you can grab some air? That's where they're going to get the money from. So our trees getting ready to be an endangered species. Because you, you got to get the trees in order to print this money. And they're getting ready to print money. Them, I feel sorry for the printing presses. If they had feelings and could talk to us. Everybody, well, pass down, this just don't make no sense. No, you don't make sense. Ignorance is not bliss. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> we're getting ready to see, even more so, the United States of America rivaling the poorest countries in the world. Because we don't understand the fundamentals of economics. Now, as dumb as I am, and I live next to a creek way out in the country, how is it that I'm able to see this? And you people out there that's got all this intelligence can't see it. You know, there are a lot of people out there that are a whole lot smarter than we are when you come to book-wise and sense. I can, I can right now, I can think of at least 10, one, two, three, I can think of at least 10 Israelites off the top of my head right now that has already gotten out of debt that has already purchased land and put a home on it while they still yet living in the city while everybody's making excuses it can't be done I got all these I never talk about them you know why because then people like you who sit on your do nothing want to do nothing you'll be beating down the doors want to get there so you can bring that same old attitude and that same old spirit to a good holy place like that to people who are making an effort. They're, they're storing, they got the food stored up. They're everything. They're, I told you there are places already being prepared. But who do you put there? Well, you put saints. Well, which one are they? Uh oh. Before the end of this year, we're going to have five families moved into this area right here just to come to church here. They can move all around this area. Unbelievable, isn't it? Where in the world somebody won't do that for? they doing it. They would get somebody up here and play some instruments too. Free me. I want to be freed. I promise you. Don't know what to say to wake up Israel. But Israel need to be woke up. I guess they do too. Brethren, people are moving around. They're moving around. Because you know the reason why? Because when civil unrest hit this country, who are you going to trust? Your neighbor? According to the Bible, who is your neighbor? I know who my neighbor is. My neighbor is the one who do the will of the Father. These hat filling cars up here ain't my neighbor. These swine eating, gyrating Gentiles, they ain't my neighbor. Mm -mm. I know who my neighbor is. You better believe it. And I hope to give us some understanding here today. Let's go ahead and cut the feed for a second. Myself and Joe, um, Joe is working on a video site because you know our YouTube is starting to censor, right? And um, Joe is almost, uh, me and him been in, uh, investing in a video site. And what we're going to do, um, Joe is going to create a, 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 a site to where our videos can it can run on the same platform as YouTube runs, except it's exclusively ours. That means I can upload whole entire sermons to bore y'all half to death. <laughs> See, all this stuff is working behind the scenes. I got people, I'm telling you, I got people right now close, closing on land. And their whole thought is, is to get faithful Israelites there. They call me up and say, what about this? I go, nope. They say, what about this? I go, nope. What about this one? I go, nope. Oh, brother Mike experiencing the new broom that sweeps well. What's his name? Not Kwai. Who came here? He down at brother Mike. He, he was sweeping well for about three days. And that broom wore out fast. He's the one who said he, he don't have no spirits. You hear me, Brother Joe? He, he, didn't, he didn't got no spirits. So while we was in here during deliverance, we had 208 people in this place right here. And a cyclone, a hurricane, and a typhoon, and everything else went through this place. And he was spiritual, didn't have no spirits. I don't know. I told him, I said, man, 
I said, man, I, that's amazing. I ain't never met a person that didn't have an abundant supply of them. He said he got the Holy Spirit, so he got the Ruah. He don't have no spirit. I said, well, man, I've been, I got the role of Ruah. I've been having a Ruah for a long time. Ain't y'all some of y'all been having a Ruah a long time? <clears throat> All of a sudden, he ain't got no spirit. He the first one exempt. Bro, Mike told me that, yeah, he, he's on disability. I said, really? What what he on disability for? Oh, Pastor, you ain't going to believe this. I said, I'll believe it, brother. You tell me, I'll believe it. I said, what's he on disability for? Um, he got diagnosed schizophrenia. <laughs> and I said, run this past me again. And he ain't got no spirit. And he's schizophrenic. Somebody said, Pastor Doc, boy, you sure don't mind calling names. Do they call my name? Did Paul call names? We don't want you to mis mistake anybody. Don't we call the Satan name? You need to know who your enemy is. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Doc, I ain't used to this because you still got that Christian residue on you. You know, up north, ain't that right, Brother Jamie? Look at Brother Jamie. Come here, Brother Jamie. You look at Brother James right here, right? See, up north, he'll look at you and just be looking at you. Mm -hmm. And he'll tell you, I don't like you. <laughs> right. <laughs> nah. yeah. I don't believe that. And do it with a straight face. Yes, sir. Can you look with a straight face? Look out there with a straight face, bro. That's pretty intimidating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, He's saying, I am not receiving anything you're trying to sell. And they tell you straight up. Yep. Down south, they smile, and they're not as front, up front like the people up north. Now smile, south, they befriend you, they smile at you, and then as soon as they get finished doing that, they run, kick the traces and run off and cut your throat and go slander and, and defame you and talk about you. Up north, they just tell you straight up what, what he is. Yes, sir. Is that right, Brother James? Yes, sir. Hey, amen. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. That's what they do. Now south they hypocrites. Uh oh. All right. I'm serious. That's how we is. We're gonna talk about behavior in Israel and righteous judgment, maturity among us. We now we are, we're in the midst of the feast. All right. We're gonna learn something today. We're gonna learn something. Y'all need to really truly know this. Hallelujah. We're going to really get in depth with the war. So we're going to do a little bit of reading here. More blessed. You need to hear. Because I promise you, you're going to hear perspective that you're not used to hearing in these other religious sectors. One thing about it, though, is going to be the truth. <clears throat> our attitude has got to change from the Christian Gentile perspective to our Hebrew heritage. Because we're Israel. We're Israelites, all right? Our people do not think like Christians. Because Christianity is a man-made religion. It's a brand new religion. It's, it's been on the earth uh, basically since about 321. And, it, and they think from a Western perspective. Amen. This whole book is written from an Eastern perspective, translated from a Western perspective. And that's what causes the confusion in the minds of people today. That's why it's hard for us to discern. But, you know, the apostles already told us, if you're going to understand this thing, you got to study. You got to study. Because they knew that this, these scriptures were going to be out of our hands and into the hands of another people. And that's why our minds are so messed up today. Hallelujah. But we're living in a time when we're going to have to deal with people who do not know that they invoke demonic spirits to go out and do their bidding. I was talking with Pastor Johnson this morning. Uh, Y'all remember we had two miscarriages uh, from sisters um, here about a year ago. Along about this time frame, and I'm up here pacing back and forth, and, and all of a sudden I said, you know what, somebody's praying a curses against us. I said, we got something for that. I want everybody to repeat after me. Well, they repeated after me. We returned the curses to the senders. Most people are not familiar with that kind of attitude of spirit. And then you know what happened, don't you? 
while we was here during God's in South Carolina and in Georgia, uh, three of our Israelite sisters, all of them had babies within 24 hours. Now, you go figure that. How does that happen? You can put a church 5,000 people in it, you can't even get that kind of odds. Uh oh. So we're getting ready to go a little bit deeper. Somebody say, oh boy, Pastor done said it again. Deeper. We're getting ready to go deeper. See what happens is Pastor Dow is so antagonistic against those demonic spirits that are dwelling deep down inside of you that when I tap into those things, you're not ready to deal with them. They're going to deal with you. Amen. Hallelujah. But you can't, can, nobody can go around and just fling witchcraft curses and use coercive psychic prayers and think that you're not going to be challenged by the saints of the Most High who are informed and know how to call on the Father. See, a lot of people, they spend the majority of their time functioning by how they feel and whatever the emotion is at that time. Now the Bible teach that they that are led by the spirit of Yah. These are the sons of Yah. It didn't say being led by every other spirit. It said being led by the spirit of Yah. But the truth is everybody's not led by the spirit of Yah. Alright. <clears throat> you as Israelites do not have to be a doormat. To everybody's slander, disdain, disgust, disapproval. Neither do you have to go around and accepting what people say and do about you. We're going to teach you how to fight in this war. And boy, I tell you, you better get your pins hot because, boy, we're going to have a lot we're going to cover here today. Hallelujah. We're going to let the Bible speak. Is that all right? Because it's a total different mindset than what you're used to. So being removed from our land and removed from our heritage, we've lost our, a lot of our ability to understand war. We don't know war like David and our ancient people did. Now it's my job to feed you with knowledge and understanding. And we have a lot of knowledge to be fed and a lot of understanding to gain simply because everything has been taken away from us and whatever's been lost. But I'm not going to sit back and watch people who are being used by the devil to actually make your life miserable, continue to thrive. I'm going to give you the knowledge of Yah's word and show you what you need to do. And when we all do it, they're in trouble. Big time trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices, but the majority of people do walk around ignorant of his devices. So I'm going to teach you how to fight in a greater spiritual capacity this morning. So get ready, all right? Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I, I, I know y'all was against all these shenanigans and all these evil practices of lying tongues. I know he is. And with that said, we're going to start off in Ezekiel the 13th chapter starting in verse 17. We're going to hear from the prophets. We're going to hear from the Messiah himself, and we're going to hear from the apostles. Is that all right? We're going to get a well-rounded view here, okay? Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 17. We're going to read all the way down to verse 23. Come on with it, Brother Shane. Likewise, thou son of man, mm -hmm. set thy face against the daughters of thy people. Against who now? Which against the daughters of thy people. Now notice, he's talking about a particular order of people here. The daughters. Of, he's being definitive. Of thy people, right? Amen. Watch this now. Read. Which prophesy out of their own heart. What do they do? Prophesy out of their own heart. Keep going. And prophesy thou against them. What? Prophesy against them. Yes. What? And prophesy against them. Yes. If you're against, that means you're not in favor of. Is that right? Read on. And say, thus saith the Master Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes mm -hmm. and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. What, what are they doing? Hunting souls. Do y'all hear that? 
hunting souls. Let's let's get on. Let's see what the prophet says. Read on. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? Whoa, and whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all hearing this? Will you hunt the souls of my people? And notice, these are people that are speaking from their own heart. Not led by the Ruah. But will you hunt the souls of my people? Read. And will ye save the souls of lies that come unto you? In other words, you're going to hunt the souls of my people, but if anybody comes to hear you, uh, is your intent to save their soul alive? I mean, that's my intent. Just to save the soul. Read on. And... Will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Whoa. Who are they lying to? His people that do what? Hear your lie. There's just a lot of Israelites that's just not strong enough to know what's going on, to understand what's going on, they don't understand that they're listening to these people's lies. All right? But there's an intent and a purpose behind it. Huh? Let's read on what he says. Wherefore thus said the Master Yahweh, Behold, I am against your pillows wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. Isn't yep. that something? You, 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 the whole purpose is you hunt these people out to make them fly. In other words, to make them go away from the way that they should be running to. Oh, see, but, but the prophet gets a little bit more definitive as he goes on. Read. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hands. So the, the Most High did promise that he going to deliver his people out of their hands, right? Amen. Let's read. Come on. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh. Come on. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad. Does that not make the heart of the righteous sad when you hear lies? Does it not? I mean, you, you, we're all human. You do feel it. You know, Paul said, now I get grieved, but I don't get grieved like a lot of people. I'm only grieved in part because that, that's part of the human anatomy. Nobody likes having falsehoods and lies told about them. You understand me? Or people who you love and that are fond of. But we got another set of people out here that is waging war against those of us who are of the way. See, this message can be used for any, any uh, particular Israelite camp. They're scattered all abroad so you can gain knowledge to know how to fight spiritually against those who do not favor your cause. Watch this. Read on, brother Shane. Whom I have not made sad. And strengthen the hands of the wicked. They do what? Strengthen the hands of the wicked. Now, read verse 22 again. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad. Notice, you made the heart of the righteous sad. Y'all hearing this prophet talk? Do we not see this behavior happening today? Yes, well, let's get some understanding while all this is going on. Come on now. Whom I have not made sad and strengthened the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. They ain't got no intent for the people to turn from their wicked way to give them eternal life. That's what the Most High offers us, his life. They don't even have it. Not even in their bosom. Read on. Therefore, ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. Now, the Most High done spoke. Whoever thought that this passage of Scripture was sitting in there, with all the mischief we got going on today. Huh? The prophets, I told you, that's nothing new under the sun. These slanderers, these lies, these talebearers, these deceivers, they there. See, what happens is they come and get a taste of eternal life, a taste of the way. But then the apostles tell us, but then afterward they go, just like a dog do, they return to their vomit. And just like a, a sow, a swine, to their wallowing in the mire. And the apostles said it had been better for them to even now have known the way than to have known it than to turn from it. So you get people that are bitter. 
Because coming this way, there's a required change, transformation for everybody. Nobody's exempt. Amen. But then they start despising the way. Amen. And then when you start despising the way, you despise everyone that is of the way. But remember, the attack is always on the shepherd. You got You attack the shepherd because you do that. The, remember, the serpent always goes for the head. You check the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. That's the whole intent. Do y'all hear what the Most High is saying? I'm trying to make these people alive, but your intent is to scatter them. I haven't made them sad, but your intent is to make the righteous sad. My intent is to give them life, but you can't promise them nothing. Are y'all hearing this is real? <laughs> Let's go over to the renewed covenant. And let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 verses 1 through 6 and let's hear what the Apostle Saul said. Come on with it. See, this is a message that need to be delivered to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say it again because we're not ignorant of the Satan's devices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 1 through 6. Come on, Brother Shane. Now I, Paul, myself, <laughs> beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Come on. Who in presence and base among you but being absent and bold towards now, you. Now let's stop for one second. You're going to read today many, many times and hear many, many times about Paul talking about how bold he was. Amen. I mean, I'm a bold preacher. I'm, I'm a straight up bold pastor. You give me Amen. preaching and teaching, put me out in the pulpit, it's over. You put me out there with everybody else, like people come, they say, man, you don't even hardly know you're around. Huh? But I want you to see the character of Paul. He knew that he was bold. Are right, you following me? And he was bold towards people. Somebody said, but it's only saying right now, Pastor, that in the absence I'm bold towards you. But yeah, we haven't read all the rest of the passages we're going to be reading today. So you can develop a good understanding. See, a lot of people, when they can't do nothing against the truth, they try to attack people's character because they can't do nothing against the truth so the idea is to pervert your ears to sway your ears from hearing the truth so that you can walk in life because they have nothing promised for you are y'all listening to this alright read brother Shane but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence. Wherewith I think to be bold against some. Which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. See now we got people that are automatically making judgments against the apostle here. That's trying to think that he's walking in the flesh. Because he's bold towards some. That's the same thing that people compute thought today. Especially if you're on the receiving end of rebuke. And correction. And instruction. We're going to find out what type of integrity or heart you got. Uh oh. Because the scriptures teach that correction is grievous unto him that forsake of the way. Uh oh. David said, Yah, do not correct me in thy hot displeasure. In other words, don't be hot when you do it because, man, I won't, it won't be no mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I understand what's going on because I'm a man of the book. And that's why I, I, I diligently in, inquire of you and beseech you over and over again. Read the Bible. Let it become part of you because then your mind and your thoughts will, will be directed towards that way when things start happening. On, Am I making sense? Because if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you by the word, you're going to act in the flesh. You're going to act and respond the same cardinal way as the way the world would. Paul made many statements when he said, I seek to stir up your mind by way of remembrance. That means there's something already in there. If nothing is already in there, you can't remember. And if you can't remember, you automatically default to the flesh. And we're charged to not walk in the flesh so that we don't fulfill the lust of that flesh. Amen. Is that right? Amen. 
We're charged to walk in the spirit. Isn't that right? Now we live in a society where they don't think that you should resist or fight or stand up for yourself whatsoever at all. I don't believe that. I, ain't, I don't read that. Hallelujah. It's like the other day I had somebody um, send me a message on, you know, what I did was doing one of my gun videos. Watch it, pastor, they said. He that take the sword will die by the sword. And I said, isn't that something? Then they quoted to me a passage that Jesus said. I said, really? I said, it's amazing how when I hold this sword up, everybody automatically takes me to be a criminal. Or a person that is intent on doing injury, hurt, harm towards someone. When all I'm doing is holding the sword. Let me see. Now, when Yahshua was here and he was giving instruction to Peter and Peter had cut off the guy's ear, he didn't tell him to throw his sword away. He didn't tell him to go turn it into the government. Did he? No. Huh? Huh? No, man. So Peter put that thing back up in his place. So if you ever see Pastor Dow walk around with a gun on my side, it's back in his place. See, wisdom is too high for a fool. But it's justified of our own. Believe it or not, I do not have a criminal record. Not one blotch or stain against it. Your government can't say that. Everything you trust in can't say that. So just because I have a sword in my hand or I'm walking around with a sword, that does not make me evil. Regardless of your perverted perspective. Isn't that something? Does not the scriptures teach self-preservation? What does it tell you to do if a thief break into your home? Huh? Huh? I mean, we got all types of, of pro provisions in here to protect ourselves. Amen. So no, I'm not. And, and it's amazing how they automatically inscribe to me violence. And I'm not a violent man. But if somebody come do some violence to me, you're going to see a violent man. But you see how they have manipulated our mind and conscience? This is public sentiment. This is public thought. The whole public thinks like this. It's okay for these police who live to break the law and do it underminingly. And then you go to a lawless system that know that they're jacking you for every dollar you get. And you trust in it because you're ignorant of the system. And when somebody is lawful and you see them carrying it, it's okay for the police to carry a gun, but it's not okay for the citizen to carry a gun. Where that mindset come from? Back in that day, the Romans was carrying swords. That means if Peter had a sword, guess what? The other 11 had a sword too. Amen. Chances are the Messiah even had a sword on him too. Y'all see what? How they have swayed public sentiment? <coughs> We've been manipulated and dominated and coerced trained amen, amen. to think this way amen. told you Israel you better start getting the nature of a line yeah. a line in the wilderness and not a line from the circus yeah. amen. there's a difference between the two yeah. see a man can take a whip go inside of a cage and take a line that has been trained by the circus and make him stand up on a stool and raise his hands and everybody would applaud. Because this line has been removed from his natural habitation. That line, he can actually say a command and make it roar. And everybody will stand up and applause. That's a train line. That Trainer could actually open that tele line, open up his mouth, and stick his head in it. Amen. And everybody would applaud. Amen. Now I ask you a question. If this guy's so good with lines, tell him go out into the African jungles. 
or the safari or the desert in Africa where the lions at and try to do it one of them lions that's born in the wild. I promise you one thing, that lion ain't going to obey your commands because that lion has its own nature. Hallelujah. Well, let me make the connection. Is not the Messiah a lion of the tribe of Judah? He's not going to be trained, trained and coerced and manipulated by this world nor his system. When he come, he got a kingdom he going to set up. And ain't nobody going to be telling him to jump up on no stool. Roar like a lion. And open your mouth. Think. I need to put that up there again. Think. Think, Israel. You see the difference? Here in America, everybody's been trained very well. Y'all hearing this? All right, let's go back over to 2 Corinthians now. Where we at, Brother Shane? Verse 3. Verse 3. All right, read on. For though we walk in the flesh. We what? We do not war after the flesh. Y'all hear that? I know we're walking in the flesh. You know we're walking in the flesh. We'd be crazy to say we're not. I'm looking at a bunch of flesh. Hallelujah. But our war is not after the flesh that you see. Is that right? He goes on to explain, read. For the weapons of our warfare. You mean to tell me we got weapons? The weapons of our warfare, read. Are not carnal, but mighty through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. See, this is the problem we're having today. Everybody thinks that every thought that enter into their mind originates from their own conscience. You wouldn't believe how I many people are ignorant of that. They're controlled and dominated by thoughts that enter into their minds. Amen. Have you forgotten that the devil is loose? Or maybe, how can you forget when you don't know as a devil exists? And what the devil does is he uses a voice that you're familiar with. You remember what the prophet says. The heart is evil. And above all things, it is desperately wicked. You don't know it. No, you don't. No, because if you knew it, you wouldn't obey some of the wicked things it say. Talk to me, Israel. Just because you hear something in your thoughts, and it's your voice, don't you assume that that's, that's the way it is, and that's the way it should be. Somebody need to knock on your hard head and tell you to wake up and stop being controlled and manipulated and dominated by things you don't understand. Are we getting this? Yes, sir. Snap out of it. Some of you already trying to be low to sleep. I don't know how you can do that. But everything that enter into your mind is not your fault. There's some spiritual weaknesses and they're operating in high places. They emit thoughts and suggestions to your mind. What do you think is going to happen to your thought pattern if you are walking with Yah in obedience to his commandments, his laws and his statutes, and then you turn from it? How would that affect your mind? Nobody will claim that they, that they hate Yah. No, they won't. They won't admit it. They all say they love him. But the way, according to the Psalms 83, the scriptures that teach us, the way that they show that they hate him is by raising up their hand against his people. That's why you have to be a student of the book. Are y'all following me? All right, now read on, brother, say. And every high thing that exalted <laughs> itself against the knowledge of Yah and bring it into captivity... Every thought to the obedience of Christ. But in order to do that, listen to what he says at the end of this verse. You got to have this in your conscience. Read. And have an in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. When? When your obedience is fulfilled. Based on conditions. You've got to be obedient. Amen. Before you can even bring vengeance on disobedience. See the condition? 
See, if you was walking in the fruit of life, and now you're walking in the fruit of death, that's going to affect the way your mind thinks. That's going to affect the way you function. So the instruction is, any things that come into your mind that is not originating from the spirit of truth, that does not come from the Holy Spirit, you need to, number one, be sober. And if you find out that that is not the nature of Yahweh, you need to cast it down. Are y'all hearing that? Anybody ever get lustful thoughts before? Where that originate from? Huh? A lot of times originate from you. Yeah, it does. A lot of times originate from you. Because the, the Bible clearly says a man, when he's drawn away, he's drawn away by his own lust when he is enticed. Uh oh. See, a lot of things we blame the stuff on the devil, and it's just you. Why? Let's go back to the prophet. The heart is evil above all things and desperately wicked. Do you know why? Because you were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Now, when you come to understand that, now you are ready, ready, just like the book says, to revenge all disobedience. Why? Because now you can line up with the word by being obedient. Right. Now you have the means to fight. Amen. You getting that? Now you can cast down imaginations because the only way you're going to cast that down imagination is with truth. Amen. That's right. Amen. Huh? You got to have truth. Do you understand that? You can't fight you can't fight a wicked thought with lies. You gotta fight it with truth. And in order to do that, you gotta know the truth. Are y'all listening to Israel? We ain't even got the first layoff yet. And we already going deep. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. We need this. We need this, Israel. We're going to develop, all right? Come on, Brother Shane. Finally, my brethren. Do what? Be strong in Yeshua. Y'all hear that? Be strong in who? Yeshua. Not yourself. How y'all hearing that? Not nobody else. Be strong in the master. Hallelujah. Read on. And in the power of his might. Whose might? His might. Yeshua. Don't come in your own might. Be strong in his might. Come on. Put on the whole armor of Yah. Now, wait a minute. How is it that we, we, our weapons, which is not cardinal, and the weapons is to cast down imaginations? That means you've got to be proactive. Amen. You can't be passive in this. Amen. Are you following me? And anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. Amen. Are you following me? Yes, but in order to do that, you've got to have the sword of the Spirit. Amen. What is the sword of the Spirit? The word. But now we go to the next level. Put on the armor Holy of Yah. Yes. Put on, you mean to tell me he's got armor Holy for us to put on? Amen. Yeah. What happens if you go into battle without the proper armor? Huh? You suffering? You going to chance out? You going to suffer injury? Yeah. Is that right? Let's see what his armor is and what it's for. Verse 11 again. Put on the whole armor of Yah that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now the wiles, look at this, is trickery. His cunning, deceitful ways. That's called wiles. Deception. Alright? Notice the devil got total different weapons. See what he does is he use ignorant man who don't know no better to use natural cardinal weapons against each other. Y'all get that? Now, let me clarify this. If somebody come to you with a stick and want to do you some bodily harm, if you can't get a hold of a stick, you grab hold of the best thing you can or a gun and you end that threat real quick. Because they have already made a decision that they're going to fight you in other means. Y'all hearing that? Y'all getting this? Oh, Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Dow, I think we ought to turn the other cheek. You shut up, you ignoramus. You don't even know what it means. If I even ask you what it means, I guarantee you'll sit there like a 
bumbling idiot thinking that we understand what the Messiah is saying because of our look at this Greco-Roman Western European mindset it's amazing how the Romans the Greeks and the Americans they never practice turning another cheek they turn everybody else cheek though Uh oh. Amen. That means they don't even believe what they believe. Amen. Amen. Yeah. True. Amen. Look at the who twos and two twos. Do they believe in turn the other cheek? They're whooping a fight each other, killing each other left and right. Y'all getting this? Amen. Boy, boy, boy. Religion has done a job on us. Sure. Run done a I mean done a job. Amen. Read brother saying. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Every time you see somebody in conflict, what is it about, though? Flesh and, flesh and blood. blood. It's the ignorant person that always wants to exalt it to something physical because they can't fight spiritually. Are y'all listening to me? So he's defining for us, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Are you following me? Read on. But against principalities, against powers, <laughs> Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, uh -huh. against spiritual wickedness in high places. According to the scriptures, according to what we know about the, the renewed covenant, what's the highest place at? The mind. The mind. That's where them spiritual weaknesses is worn at. That's why some of you can't carry a civil conversation on with nobody, even when you get inflamed in heat and madness. Because you're functioning more after the thing that is controlling you than sense. Or let me put it the scripture way, the biblical way. Than being led by the spirit. Remember, whomsoever you yield your members, servants to obey. That's who serving you are. Don't, every time you get angry, it's not righteous indignation. You just stop lying. Hallelujah. Come on with it. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yah, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Now, it's amazing how we read this, and they are familiar that we are in a war, and we're walking around oblivious. As if nothing is going on. He's giving us instructions. Don't only just, just, just put on armor, put on the whole armor. Read. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. With what? With truth. He didn't say lies, did he? With truth. Read on. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. There go your defense. Because all our righteousness is of him. The breastplate of righteousness. Read on. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Man, this is some good armor. Man, is, that, is that not some good armor, brother? Truth, righteousness, peace. Read on. Above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of what? The shield of faith. What does faith do? Read. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now we can see who walking in faith. Come on. He said you'll be able to quench what? Some of the darts? All. Oh, all the darts. Fiery darts of the what? Wicked. And the wicked just think the devil himself. There are people who are under the control of Satan. And we're going to read that too. So that you'll know. Hallelujah. Read on. And take the helmet of salvation. <laughs> what? A helmet? Of salvation. Read on. And the sword of the spirit. Now wait a minute, Pastor Dow. You didn't live by the sword, die by the sword. What? A sword of the spirit? You mean tell me if we're not going to be fighting against flesh and blood and wrestling against flesh and blood, that we do have a war that we're involved in and we even need to have a sword in the spirit? That sounds violent. Read on. Which is the word of Yah. What, what does Pastor Dow keep trying to drill in our head? Get the word in your heart. That's your sword. 
This world was framed by words. Yeah. Hung on nothing by words. Y'all understand that? Your words, they are spirit and they are life. By your words you are justified and by your words you are condemned. Amen. Words are pretty heavy because they are spiritual. You could either walk in life or death because that tongue it can function either way. Even though we know that bitter and sweet should not flow from the same fountain. Am I right, Israel? Yes, sir. Oh, come on now. I'm depending on a working knowledge of the word now. I can't get you to agree if there ain't nothing in there to remember. Remember the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read on, brother. Praying always. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. In the what? In the spirit. Now he just gave us a bunch of armor up here too. To, and when we get in ready to go into prayer. Read on. And watching thereunto with all perseverance. With all what? With all perseverance. Man that's some serious striving isn't it? That's some serious standing too isn't it? Come on. And supplication for all saints. For some of the saints. All saints. No man our brothers and sisters we don't even know need this kind of help. They need to be undergirded. Read on. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. What? Paul said boldly again? Man, if Paul was in his time, we'd tell him how prideful he is. We'd we, we be trying to tell Paul, he trying to call it passion, but we know it's pride. See this sick mindset we're dealing with? He said boldly again. Nobody don't want no sissy pastor. Ain't that right? No weak, cowardly, soft-spoken pastor who carries handbags. <laughs> Read on, brother Shane. To make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly. What? That he may speak how? Boldly. Boldly? That he may speak boldly? Yes. Hmm. See, y'all's men have a character and nature that accompanies them. Come on, bro. As I ought to speak. So we see that Paul speaks boldly, right? We're going to go into the law, all right? Deuteronomy 11, verse 26. Y'all don't mind, we, we're going to cover some scripture here now, all right? Verse 26 through 28. Y'all ready? Read, brother Shane. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Y'all hear that? A blessing and a what? Curse. You see, some people think that we walk in the flesh because they are walking in the flesh. But to be a man or a woman or Yah, you've got to resist the devil. Amen. The Bible teaches you that. It tells you, you your submission is to Yahweh first. And then you resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Amen. It doesn't teach us just to sit back passively. You got something you got to do. Hallelujah. So he said, I'm sitting before you today a blessing and a curse. Read. A blessing. If ye obey the commandments of Yahweh, your Elohim, which I command you this day. Notice, a blessing, this is based on conditions, right? There's a word in there, if. Read. And a curse, if you will not obey the commandments ah. of Yahweh, your Elohim. Y'all see what's happening? See, somebody's walking in blessings, and somebody's walking in curses. And the way you can tell that is by their nature. And their life. Y'all hearing that? Read on. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. Blessings are desirable things which are beneficial 
that are given to us and granted to us by the Almighty Himself because we are obedient to Him. Disobedience in any form brings curses. And our book teaches us that there are punishments, both naturally and spiritually, that are laid out for transgressors against the Most High's righteous and holy laws. Are y'all listening? So when we're disobedient, we experience painful conditions. Is that right? We experience painful feelings. Isn't that true? Life is not as enjoyable as it should be. Hallelujah. And like I said before, your body is a barometer to the spiritual realm. You need to pay attention to it sometime. It talks to you. It's going to tell you what's going on inside, outside. It's going to tell you. You need to learn the communication of it. Your body can even tell you when you're under spiritual attack. Yes. But you need to know how to discern the spirit. See, a, a wicked man or a wicked woman. See, we live in a time now where wickedness of a man is increasing. And since we've been conditioned as good Christians in our minds, rather than functioning like Israelites, we have permitted the wicked to live and that they shouldn't be cut off from us. Just like Ahab permitted that wicked woman Jezebel. Just like Eli permitted his wicked sons. <clears throat> I have never in my life ever met a brother or sister that actually ever admitted to walking in the spirit of falsehood and deceptions. I ain't never met one that ever that said I was a, I'm a liar. And I've been deceiving people. Have you? No. Oh, okay. See, this is why it's important, according to the law and according to the Messiah, we need two witnesses. It's very important. Regardless of their resistance, we need two witnesses. And it comes before the assembly. And then after diligent inquiry, we will find out who to be true, what to be true. Then they'll be cut off. That's what heathen and public men is. Let's go to Matthew 18, verse 15. See, these are protections that the Messiah put for the sake of the assembly. Matthew 18, verse 15 through 20. Read, Brother Shane. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Uh-huh. Come on. If he shall hear, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Mm -hmm. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church... Now, here's the part that we need to capitalize on. Read. Let him be unto thee... As a heathen man. Now, do do and heathens dwell in the assembly? Yes. No, they don't. A heathen is a wicked Gentile. Yes, I mean. They don't keep the laws and statutes and commandments. He said, let him be unto the ass and heathen and a what? Publican. A publican, just like anybody else out here. That don't come to submit. See, that's, that's our protection. We just reluctant to do it. Read. Verily I say unto you. What you say, Jesus? Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth. You mean to tell me after get finished talking about something like this, you go into binding and loosening? Yeah, Remarkable, isn't it? Amen. Read. What if, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Look at his word. Read. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. For where two or three <laughs> are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Jesus just got finished quoting the law whether you know it or not. He just got finished quoting the law. The thing that we've been conditioned after this Western religion perspectives has been done away with. I found it out ain't never been done away with. Huh? 
The word heathen is in the Greek lexicon 1482. It says, look at this. I'm going to read you. Look at this. Adapted to customs of a people premier, uh, peculiar to a people nation suited for manners, languages of foreigners, strangers. In the New Testament, savoring the nature of pagans. Y'all hear that? Savoring the nature of pagans. See, as Israelites, you're, you're demanded to be transformed. You can't be walking around here looking like an Israelite on the outside and your mind functions like a pagan. Huh? Look what it says. Alien to the worship of the true Yah. Heathenism. The pagan, the Gentile. We're surrounded by pagans. You don't know what a pagan is? Look at anything outside this gate. You, you got paganism in its purest form. Deuteronomy 17, verses 2 through 7. Y'all ready? We're going to go and see where Jesus got this thought from, this perspective. Read. If there be found among you within any gates which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Yahweh thy Elohim in transgressing his covenant. Now notice, how does a man or woman wrought wickedness? By transgressing the covenant. By transgressing the covenant. Read. And hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven which I have not commanded. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquire diligently, and behold, if it be true, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Where is that abomination wrought at? In Israel. Now notice, a diligent inquiry. Read on. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gate. Uh -huh. Even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones Till they die. Till they what? Till they die. Y'all see what the law was for transgression like this? Walking like this? Y'all see this? Read on. At the mouth of two witnesses Whoa. or three witnesses Whoa. shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. Whoa. But, at the, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. Whoa. So you got... One witness, no. But if you got two or three witnesses and that thing diligently found to be true, it's time to start stalling folks. See, that's the way it used to be in that dispensation of time. But when Messiah came and sacrificed himself, we better thank him for grace. We better thank him for favor. We better thank him for mercy because we should have stoned a lot of you folks by now. Uh-oh. A lot of people in Israel should be stoned by now if we were still... See, what he did was magnify the law and give you a space and time of toleration called grace. See, he, he quoted directly from the law. And you did that in the law or when, in that dispensation of time. Moses, we took you out and stoned you to death. And not only that, watch this. Watch this. Read on, Brother Shane. The hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death. See, that we, we the one that go and get, bring the accusation and it's found out true, you the first one to throw the stone. Uh-oh. And then afterwards what? And afterward, the hands of all the people. Everybody got to get in on it. Nobody exempt. And then look what he says, read. So thou shalt put the evil away from among you. See, this is our grace. This is how grace was applied. Because when the, when the master came, are you following me? He just told you to put them away, but we used to kill them till they were dead. Uh-oh. See, you're permitted to live. Uh-oh. But your life gonna be miserable. Because you can't take on that kind of spirit and not have these demons whooping the fire of you. That's why a lot of these people can't have peace. Uh oh. See, you'll see how Jesus magnified the law? 
See, death is nothing more than just separation. That's why they're not even permitted to even be around us. Amen. Separate. Y'all notice I don't mind separating people. I've been separating people and I'm going to really start separating more. So we can do what? Put away the evil from among us. That's how you do it. Uh-oh. But all these requirements have to be met first. And of course, we don't mind going talking to somebody else about somebody else. But we don't want to go to them personally. So that we can get these steps done the right way so we can carry out the law. You know why? Because you got to be the first one to throw the stone. And you don't want the same thing to happen to you and your hypocritical heart. That's why you have to be righteous. There's a character about the righteous that is un not found like in any other people in the world. The wicked flee with no man pursue, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Y'all remember the woman that was caught in the act of adultery? Y'all remember her? Huh? Hey, let's read um, Leviticus 20, verse 10. Now, according to the law, she was commanded to be stoned to death. Now, y'all hear me? Leviticus 20, verse 10, read. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Whew. America would be finished, wouldn't it? See, the Pharisees attempted, we're going to go to John the 8th chapter. The Pharisees attempted to accuse Yahshua. And the only reason why they were there, they did it. What they did was they waited till a lot of people were around. Y'all hearing me? They, they're going, they setting this thing up perfectly. See, they waited until a lot of people were around, unlike today. We got spiritual cows today. They don't wait until a lot of people are around. They hide behind keyboards. You know, and do all this other stuff. You know, that's their nature. But they waited to a bunch of people around because the intent was that they wanted to trap the Messiah in his words. Are y'all listening? Lessons learned. Nobody wants to be stoned. That's why we go behind the scenes and spew out poison. But guess who's watching? <laughs> Don't our own conscience reminds us of things we've done in the past? That's why you ain't set up as a judge. Because most of you can't judge right because you'll judge according to your wicked heart rather than righteousness. Your judgment is already perverted. you already been paid for. you already been enticed and, and sold to sin. So you can't even be a judge in Israel. Because you base judgment based on how you've done things or the guilt that you experienced and the shame that you experienced from your past experiences. Let me tell you something. I've lived in sin, done sin, just like anybody else. But I'd be damned if I'm going to let sin pervert me from righteous judgments. Sins that are past. You got that right. Again, the wicked flee when no man pursue, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. See, we got to get out of that wicked heart, Israel. If the sin is gone, it's gone. Now walk in the newness of life. But see, what we do is we allow, we see something that needs attention. And then the devil will remind us of what we've done in the past, and then we reserve judgment. Amen. Let me quote what Paul told the Romans. There's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the what? Flesh, but after the spirit. Why are you appalled at something of the sin you've done? You were born in it. You were so stupid you didn't have any other way to think. That's right. Amen. It wasn't until you got knowledge and intelligence 
with the blood of Messiah that you could actually start waking up and start purging sin from your wicked life and your conscience. Uh oh. See why everybody can't be judges in Israel? So if you can't be a righteous judge, shut up. Move out of the way and let the men get there and do it. Oh, hallelujah. John 8, start at verse 2. We're going to read down here a little bit to get an understanding. We're going to go to verse 11. Read, brother, saying. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. Uh -huh. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. I'm wondering where the man at. I just got finished reading the law. She can't be committing adultery by herself. You see, these are jack leg liars. They had an intent for this. It was a setup. Because the Bible says the man and the woman should be stoned with stones. Both of them should be bought before judgment. But see, look at these wicked people right here from the very beginning. They only bought the woman. Read. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what say us? The audacity of these hypocrites to want to quote Moses. And even ask of him... In the temple when everybody's around while he's teaching. Just total dishonor and disrespect. You know why? Because they were driven more. By the wickedness that was in their heart. Because the only reason why they set this up. Because they wanted to accuse him. So that the people would not listen to him. That's the only reason. They were concerned about their place being removed. They could care less about the woman. Come on. Read. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. What They might do what? Accuse him. See the whole intended purpose was? Remember they set up false witnesses? Right. No, they set up false. false witnesses. Read on. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Why? Because if you're going to come accusing, you're the first one to cast a stone. Isn't that what we just read in the law? He said, I'll tell you what. I agree with just go ahead and get this started right now. You ain't got no sin, you go ahead and start casting stones. And then he went right back to writing on the ground again. Read, Brother Shane. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience. Ah, right there. They being convicted by their what? Own, own conscience. conscience. See, the one thing in this covenant right here, when you really truly been forgiven of sin, the Bible says there will be no more remembrance of sin, that he would even purge your conscience. But these people are dealing with the same guilt, the same condemnation that they're accusing people of. I've, one thing I've learned in his walk, whatever you are guilty of, you are the worst judge against others. Because the Bible teaches, be therefore merciful, even as your Father in heaven is merciful. Does it not teach that? Does it not teach that? And all of a sudden, we forget mercy. I've learned that those who are the most adamant and the most pratting, crazed, retarded mindsets are the ones who are actually guilty of the same thing themselves. Look at the Congress. All of them are immoral bastards. They'll throw Bill Clinton under the bus in a minute. I, heard, I seen a sign the other day. They, they made a statement about Obama. Same thing Happened with Monica Lewinsky and Clinton. Said some. I wish somebody would go and get Obama. Look at that mindset. What kind of perverted mindset is that? Huh? That's letting you know the same thing dwells in these people. These Pharisees, these liars, from the very beginning sought to sway the conscience and mind of the people 
Not because they were concerned about his teachings. They wanted to accuse him. Let's see how the Messiah handled this. Read. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Now, you know what's amazing? We got everybody accusing us of everything, accusing you of everything today. And the master is not even accusing us. He done forgiven us. But these people, they don't do like the Pharisees and just go away. These people seek hurt. These people seek destruction. These people seek death. So you're dealing with people who are inspired by demonic spirits. They are possessed by the dark realm. Are y'all following me? Read. Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. What was the judgment? That means that he forgave this woman. And he told her the instruction was, Don't go do this again. She didn't get grace to go sin again. She was charged to go sin no more. Isn't that right? Amen. The deal is, is when they was confronted well here with the Messiah, all the accusers went away. There's a different character then. At least then people will accuse you to your face. They're a little bit different today. See, sometimes we forget that we need mercy. And the, the scripture says that if you judge without mercy, you will be judged without mercy. Is that right? Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Nobody who claims the name of Yahshua that's walking in this Hebraic way, you, 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 nobody has a license to practice sin. You can't do that and expect grace to keep making the hedge up for you. Read on. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin Live any longer therein. Now let's deal with this end time seared conscious spirit. All right. First Timothy 4 verses 1 and 2. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. What are, what are people going to do in the latter times? Depart from the faith. Well, how are they going to do it, Brother Shane? Giving heed to seducing spirits Given, and Giving heed to what? Seducing spirits. You mean spirits that are sent to seduce you. Y'all hear that? Spirits sent to seduce you. Read on. And doctrines of devils. Teachings of devils. Read on. Speaking lies. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. These people are going to depart from the faith because they're seduced by spirits and teachings of devils and they speak lies. Is that right? Read on. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. See, you're dealing with reprobate now. You're dealing with a reprobate mind now. A mind that can't even be helped. So they, they're going to just go and fill up their cup. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In context, this next phrase, you often hear it, often quoted in every religious circle out there, but it's not understood. You see, First Chronicles 16, verse 21, 22. David is blessing Yahweh in Psalm. And he is reminding the people of what Yah said to the nations and the people who would think to do Israel, his chosen people, wrong. So you got to read that in context. But we're going to read 1 Chronicles 16, verse 21, 22. We're going to read those two verses just to get the understanding. Read, Brother Shane. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. That was for Israel's sake. He reproved kings for Israel's sake. Read on. Saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. See, all the people are holy. All Israel, all them anointed, and the prophets, don't do them no harm. Now, we're going to get to the part right here. I said all that to lay the groundwork because we're going to get to the nitty gritty. You see, there are people who love cursing. And I'm not talking about four-letter words. 
I'm talking about this other kind of cursing. Speaking injurious words towards you, walking in the spirit of falsehoods, seeking your hurt and discomfort. Are right, you following me? Telling lies on you and making up stuff. Are right, you following me? Without proper witnesses. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we respond against those that seek our harm? Or say slanderous words and falsehood against us. How do we fight this war? And how did the apostles do it? We need a balance because before Christ it was physical death. Now after Christ in this dispensation of time of grace. How do we respond as Israelites? That's a question isn't it? How David responded against his enemies. And those who conspired against them. Psalms 109 verse 1 through six. We're going to start there first. You ready? Come on, brother Shane. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Hold not thy peace, O Yah of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked... The mouth of the who? The mouth of the wicked. The mouth of the what? The mouth of the wicked. Read on. And the mouth of the deceitful... The mouth of the what? The deceitful. The deceitful. Read on. Are opened against me. Uh-huh. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. Well, what kind of tongue? With a lying tongue. Y'all see the reason why y'all need to know this? Yes, see, stuff like this just can't be ignored. No, you need to know. I can tell you to ignore it because I know what to do about it. That's right. Once you know what to do about it, you tell the people who don't know any better, just ignore that stuff until you get to understand it. Now you can strap on your war clothes. Right. It's called getting in the prayer closet. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. As the old saying go, you talk about me on your feet. I'm going to talk about you on my knees. And it's going to be a different kind of talking too. Amen. We're going to watch David, all right? They spoke against me in the lion tongue, verse 3. They compassed me about also with words of hatred. Now, how did these people do this? With words of what? Hatred. See, that's how they compassed him about. With words of hatred. Read on. And fought against me without a cause. What's the cause even fighting? Well, what? You know the law. If we wronged any man, what are you supposed to do? Get it right. Isn't it right? Get it right. Ain't no need in keeping stuff going. Let's get it right. Turn the page. Is that right? Listen to what David says. For my love, they are my adversaries. Some of the people I've been the most the most merciful to and, and have helped the most have become some of my greatest adversaries just like David but look what David said but I give myself unto prayer unto what? unto prayer read on and they have rewarded me evil for good what was the wicked reward? how did they reward David? evil for good evil for good read on and hatred for my love wow what kind of spirit are these people walking in? read on Set thou a wicked man over him. That's what David said. David said, y'all want you to set a wicked man over him. They don't want to listen to the righteous, so set him a wicked man over That's the reason why they go to these Christian churches. Because they got a wicked man set over them now. Uh-oh. You know, you go to the church of your choice. You got a wicked man setting over you now. Read on. And let Satan stand Whoa. at his right hand. Now, that, wait a minute. David was a man created after his own heart. David was a man robbed of y'all's own heart. And y'all hearing how David talking? Yeah. The pastor down talk like it too. It's just that I'm really letting you in on it. Yeah, I talk like it too. I, what, book, what two books I always tell y'all to always read more than anything? You know why? Because I know how to get in your mind. And when evil starts to come your way and people start attacking you, you it automatically comes to mind. You'll know what to do. Uh-oh. Paul in the renewed cup. Let's see how he dealt with a certain situation here. 1 Corinthians 5, 4. We're going to read on down to verse 6. Read. In the name of Jesus Christ, <laughs> when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Jesus Christ. Now, mind you, we just saw David. Is that right? Amen. David was also a prophet. All right, he was a king in Israel. Is that right? And he knew Yah. Is that right? Now let's see how Paul talks. He's an apostle on the other side of the impalement and the resurrection of the Messiah. Okay, read. 
to deliver such an one unto Satan. This shows a lot of delivering to Satan, isn't it? This shows a lot of delivering to Satan, isn't it? Yes, sir. I wonder why come this this kind of attitude has been lost among us who are warriors in the faith. How come we don't never hear this kind of talk? We've been loved so much with honey dripping off our lips. We done poisoned ourselves. We call love, no matter what somebody do, love them. Kill them with kindness. I'm going to kill them with some words of prayer. And I'm going to be kind while I'm praying too. Knowing the Father hear me. Look at him looking. I remember I had one guy. I told him, I said, that's all right. I know a dude about you. I'm going to go pray. I'm going to pray too. I said, I'm going to turn you over to Satan. I'm going to turn you over. I said, we'll find out. We're going to see. Because y'all ain't listening to both of us. One of us right. One of us wrong. Y'all brothers was here when y'all heard me say that, that brother. I said, one of us right. We're going to find out real quick. Because both of us ain't servants of y'all. Next thing you know, he down in Florida. It wasn't even a good week later getting beat, carjacked, with a t- and, and somebody took a tire and beat his mouth out. I don't rejoice over it, but all mouths must be stopped. And he got hit right in his mouth with a with a tire. Uh oh, let me tell y'all something. If you if you don't, I understand in Christianity you walk in oblivious falsehoods. You really truly don't understand stuff. If I can use that term, I, I know you understand my phrase. My one warning to anybody out there: don't be fooling around with men, y'all's men, if you don't know what you're doing. I'm telling you, especially me. You do that at your own risk. I don't believe it. Well, we'll see. If you just go on your little old way, go on your little way. But this man know how to pray. You better believe it. And I don't make no hesitation, no apologies for it either. We're going to get on this a little bit depth, a little bit deeper to show the reason why. But just read on, brother, saying. To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Or for the destruction of the what? Of the flesh. Now the man didn't die. His flesh all got destroyed, though. Read on. That the spirit may be saved in the day of Jesus Christ. See, the whole thing is about, man, as long as there's breath in people's body, unless you're reprobate and totally turned over, maybe you'll be able to get it. But this generation is so hard and so cold and so callous. They can't get it. It's a sad thing, but the idea is hope that they'll get it. But in this instance right here, he's talking about a man that had immoral actions. He was having sex with his father's wife. In this context, he's creating immorality. Y'all follow me? I'm showing you that David and Paul turned people over to Satan. So when y'all hear me say, my name is Pastor Dow. Then not Paul said, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. That means he's telling you, I know who I am. Now you need to know me. Yeah, or pastor people, all kind of people call them themselves pastor stuff. Yeah, but you're charged to know them that labor. You need to know them. I hear what people are saying, but you need to know them. He's not left you ignorant. You need to know. Hallelujah. You're gonna find out. Oh, hallelujah. Read on, brother Shane. Your glory in is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? See, so the law has not changed. The only thing we do, we come to is a greater understanding. We're going to go to 1 Timothy 1 18, and we're going to talk about those who made shipwreck of the faith. Huh? And this is the reason why you need to know the names of people. 1 Timothy 1 18, read. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. Notice this is a charge. Y'all hear this, saints? This is a charge. Read on. According to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them might 
Midas wore a good warfare. Whoa, 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 whoa. Paul is teaching warfare? And not only that, a good warfare? Are y'all hearing that? Not just any warfare, but a good warfare. Wonder why come we ain't never talked about this stuff? You know, over here we talk, we've been talking about this stuff for years. Why come you people don't never hear stuff like this? Read on. Holding faith and a good conscience. Holding what? Faith and a good conscience. No, that's the key right there. And a good conscience. Are y'all cold? Okay, read. Which some having put away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Some have not held the faith and kept a good conscience. They have put it away from them. Y'all hearing that? They no longer hold the faith and they no longer hold a good conscience. Some have put away faith. What do they do, bro, Shane? Have made shipwreck. Y'all hear that? Shipwreck of what? The faith. Watch this. Of whom Hymenaeus and Alexander. What? You mean tell me Paul calling names? Who does Paul think he is calling names? You mean tell me he wants the saints to know? Oh, no, Pastor. Come on, we ain't supposed to call names. Where that tradition come from? Paul is calling names. You know the reason why he's calling names? Because he do not want the saints to be deceived of who these devils are. He wants you to know. You know, it's not a pleasant thing to be talking about, but it is necessary. Sure, we all love being at peace. We love hugging each other, smiling, and having a good time and stuff. But then there's the war. There is a war. The people without ain't the one that's disturbing us. It's the people who say that they're within. They're the ones who's causing all the problems. It's the ones who name the name of Christ. But they refuse to depart from iniquity. Are y'all getting this? Read on. Whom I have delivered unto Satan. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Paul, man, he, he got a delivering the Satan problem, don't he? Every time you turn around, he turns somebody over to Satan or he delivering them to him. Now, I'm sure them people say, well, I don't care who he think he is. Paul clearly told Timothy, whom I have delivered over to Satan. That's some kind of authority. That's some kind of authority. Huh? Read on. That they may learn not to blaspheme. Ho oh, ho. What's the sole purpose of delivering them over to Satan? That they don't learn to Teach blaspheme. them, yeah, so they don't learn to do what? To blaspheme. blaspheme. So come on with all your accusations and slander. Keep doing it. Uh oh. Y'all hear this? The word blaspheme is in 987 in the Greek, and it means to speak evil of, to rail on. To be a blasphemer or to be blasphemous. Look what else the definition said. To speak reproachfully, to rail at, revile, cumulate, blaspheme. Now hear that? Now, since we're on this word blaspheme, I'm going to show y'all something y'all usually don't hear, even though we quote it a thousand times. It is blasphemous for somebody to say that they are Yehudims and they're not. Them devils over there ain't it. It's blasphemous. Let's read Revelation 2 9. Read, Brother Shane. I know thy works. And what? And tribulation. And, and poverty. But? But thou art rich. Uh huh. And I know the blasphemy. You know the what? The blasphemy. You know the evil speaking. Of them which say they are Jews. No, they say that they are what? Jews. They say that they are Jews. There are a lot of people they claiming to be the Yehudims. You know, this is the Messiah himself doing his talking. I know the blaspheme of them who say that they are. But they are what? And are not. But what are they? Spell but are the synagogue of Satan. They're the church of Satan. They're the assemblies of Satan. Y'all see the reason why I come down hard on the messianics? I come down hard. Well, I passed out your painting a broad bus. I'm going to make it real broad. Make it so broad that only a few going to get in. I'm not about to be enticed by all these smooth, conniving, wicked talkers. 
These are devils because the Messiah said they are. I know the blaspheme of them who say that they are Jews, but they are not. That land that used to be holy, that is defiled, that the Messiah said, this day your house is left unto you desolate. There ain't going to be no more temples built there until the new Jerusalem come down. If they build a temple there, it'll be because it's something coming from their satanic writings and not from the Torah or the Tanakh. This making sense? Don't y'all be deceived out there. That's why my name is, I'll say it again, Pastor Dowell. You know what that means? If you go read Ephesians 4, that means I've been chosen to bring forth a message. And my message, I'm a little bit different than the rest of these boot-licking pastors. I got the spirit of the prophets in me. I'm prophesying to the wind. Are y'all listening? And ain't afraid of their faces. That land over there that has been forsaken by y'all, who the Most High clearly says, those people over there, they ain't his. They are not his. They're blasphemers. Because they have assumed the identity of somebody who they're not. Amen. This stuff gets deep. Amen. How we read that all this time and miss over that little nuance right there? Come on. Huh? That's some heavy words. That's coming from the Messiah himself. Amen. You don't hear me claiming I'm a, I'm a Yehudim, Jew like they do. I am from the tribe of Judah. Come on. Amen. I'm an Israelite. Yeah. Amen. Well, you ain't from Judah. I'm from Benjamin. You ain't from Benjamin. I'm from Levi. You don't know where you're from. I became all things in all men. I'm at game no more. You need fool around me. Uh oh. Just because Great Britain and the United States create a nation. See, y'all don't know about the Balfour Agreement. I've been reading this book about the same since all this um, um, Benjamin Friedman came over who was one of those Zionist Jews who pulled a plug on them but was told on his own wicked devils, his own people. I've been reading, boy, how that thing came about. It's totally different than the way history paints it. But I already knew it anyway because they don't line up with the prophecies of the book. So everybody else is over there licking their boots, bowing down to them, giving them billion dollars in aid, and I know who they are. Devils. Amen. And they working for the devil. So it's also blasphemous to say that you are Yehudim and you're not. And that's a fact. Bet you ain't heard that before. It's some serious business. Just because Great Britain, United States created people, take them out of Germany and stick them in Palestine, don't make them ancestors of the ancient Israelites. Huh? Condemnation, man. Let's be going. Hey, let's look at this. First Timothy 5, verses 11 through 15. Y'all notice that this turning over to Satan stuff is not an uncommon thing amongst our heritage. Y'all hear it? Matter of fact, every voice that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. You know why? Because this is your heritage. Huh? <coughs> But before you can do that, you better be righteous. And not under your own terms either. Verse 11. But the younger widows refuse. For when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. This is anybody under the age of 60 years old. How you ascertain that, Pastor? Because I read before. So a, wi a widow or young, all right, refuse. Because when they begin to wax wanting against Christ, meaning their heart starts to grow cold against Christ. Read on. Having damnation. Because they what? Because they have cast off their first faith. They don't put a man before Christ. Read on. And withal, they learn to be idle. They learn to be what? Idle. Let's watch the nature of this. They learn to be idle. Notice, this is a learned behavior. They learn to be idle. idle. Read on. Wandering about from house to house. Oh, busybodies, huh? Read on. And not only idle, but 
but tattlers and, also and busybodies. See, back then they didn't have a telephone like we do today. We can cover a lot of ground today with a telephone and a cell phone. They just ran from house to house. We just pick up the phone and do it today. So in modern time, they would say they walk about with cell phones and text messages and internet. You got to modernize this thing, brothers. Otherwise, you think you exempt from this. Hallelujah. <laughs> Read on. Speaking things which they ought not. You mean tell me they shouldn't be saying these things? Read on. I will therefore that the younger women marry. And do what? Bear children. And? Guide the house. And do what? Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproach. Some of you do need to get married so you can have a bunch of babies so you can shut your mouth up and keep you busy. You ain't going to have no time to be on that damn hell of phone. Well, you got all these children running around and need a bunch of care. See, the most high even put bitch marks in to preserve you from yourself. <laughs> now you got women today, man, they sit at home doing nothing. They're just, just nothing. Everybody raising their children. They don't even raise them themselves. Sending them all, send them over here, send them over there. What a wicked generation we in. Read on. For some are already turned aside after Satan. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, he said, for some having already turned aside after Satan. Why do they do that? Everything that he defined it, he defined earlier. Being busybodies and tail bearers. Uh oh, speaking things which they ought not. Read. Well, you can't read no more because I'll stop it there. It was sounding good, though. Huh? Now, Paul is dealing with Elimus the sorcerer. Acts 13, verse 8. But y'all do see that people turn aside after Satan. People are turned over to Satan. People are given over to Satan. Y'all see this, right? Because you got people that they ain't going to stop at nothing. To make sure that your life is miserable, even if they're the ones that can be the instrument to do it. And this foolishness has got to stop amongst the Israelites. Acts 13, verse 8, to, 8 through 12. Read, Brother Shane. But Lamus the sorcerer, uh -huh. for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, his sole intent and purpose, listen, he was a sorcerer. And that's why I keep telling you these people are walking in sorceries. Because their only intent is to get these people to stop listening to the people who they should be listening to. Because remember what the prophet Ezekiel said? They don't have no life for them. They don't have no way for them. Their whole intent is to get people from serving Yahweh. They're not no examples. <coughs> of holiness they're not living a lifestyle to show these people the way it should be done every one of them dogs go back to the vile nature of the flesh they ain't living nothing and so Elimus his whole entire purpose was to turn people from the faith See, I'm preaching the teaching of faith. No doubt about it. Amen. Huh? Amen. But look at, look at this. Read on. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. What'd he do? Set his eyes on him. If you see me setting my eyes on somebody, whether it be near or far, and I start dealing with them, don't just chalk it up as man. What do you understand? Just because you ain't being led by the Most High, y'all don't mean that I'm not. There you go. Or doesn't mean that anybody else is not. Some of us are totally sold out and submitted to him. Uh-oh. But these dogs, they don't have a track record that even a swine would follow. Their life so vile and corrupt. A maggot wouldn't even fly light on them. Wouldn't there even be birth on them. This is how vile they are. The devil is a lie. Read on. And said, oh, full of all subtlety. Full of what? 
of all subtlety. Read on. And all mischief. And all what? Mischief. Mischief and subtlety. Who nature is that? It can only be either Yahweh or the Satan. Which one is it? So this man is actually operating after the nature of the Satan then. He's supporting his kingdom. And Satan's kingdom is manifested by the way that this man is acting. It's clearly seen for those of us who have a discerning ear and eye. Read on. Thou child of the devil. Child of the what? The devil. So if I call you a devil, boy, you better believe you one. Well, you ain't Paul. No, my name is Charles. We can't think of ourselves above anything that is written. Amen. Ain't no need to to take it away. They telling us about man. Man, it's not too complex. Amen. We got these mischievous, subtle people who are seeking to turn away from people from the, from the faith and they ain't nothing but children of the devil. That's what Paul is clearly telling us. How you like Paul now, Christians? Read on. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Again, where's their salvation? What is the purpose and intent? Are they leading them in the path of righteousness? Are they giving them faith whereby they can grow? And the answer is no. Are they being examples so that the people would be inspired to serve Yah in the beauty of holiness? Amen. And the answer is no. An emphatic no. By their fruits you shall know them. Amen. They'll be up here to put all this poison and trash in you and then once you're done away from the faith you get to arguing and fussing each other. Now both of you gone and you, here you are over here in this ditch they had gone off in another ditch and ain't no, everybody's void of Yah. And because guilt, shame, and condemnation swallow you up and pride is your ruin, you can't even find your way back to repent and go back and start listening to the ones who you should have been listening to. I heard Paul liking this. I was following him. I'd probably want to hit elements upside the head. I'll give you some sorceries. You prophesy this. You devil. But Paul, he knew what he was doing. Paul would probably beat me up. Get over there, boy. I know what I'm doing. Hallelujah. But y'all seeing how real this thing is. We're all over this book right here. And it seems like a lot of people are submitted to the devil. See, we're reluctant to tell those who are submitted to the devil because we even think ourselves at times submitted to the devil. Uh-oh. No, you're just in a warfare. You're waging a good warfare. You win some, you lose some. You need to become more of a victor, though. Your game plan is, yeah, your game plan is stupid. Hallelujah. Read. Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of Yeshua? He's seeking to do what? Pervert the right ways. Read on. And now, behold the hand of Yeshua is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. This is my next step. You don't believe, I, for years I've been meditating on this. I'm getting ready to start pronouncing on-spot judgments to see what happens. Yeah, I am too. You watch me. Watch my smoke. Read on. Not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately... There fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Boy, that's some good power, isn't it? But let's see what happened. Because, you know, most people today will look at Paul. You mean man, you. Why'd you put a curse on him? You're supposed to bless and not curse. Isn't that, isn't that the doctrine of the day? Huh? But look what happened. Read on. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, uh -huh. believed, uh -huh. being astonished at the doctrine. Man, he of became Yeshua. a believer. Huh? So Paul got one at the expense of another. Huh? Glory to the king! Glory to the king! Got one, other one cut off. Can't beat that, brother. One for one to parity. <laughs> Glory to the king. Isn't that all right? Why ain't y'all rejoicing? You should be rejoicing. You ain't LMAs, are you? Oh, okay. 
Let's go to Jude. Are y'all seeing this? It's awful quiet in here, though. I, I'm telling you, I'm a warrior. Hallelujah. You, you, straight up. I always teach people whenever I have to teach them anything with fighting. The first thing I teach them is, is do not afraid to do not be afraid to get hit. Because you're too busy worried about getting hit, you're gonna lose your focus. And then I tell them, just plan on getting hit. You just make sure you hit harder. And in the right place. But to do that, you gotta keep your mind. Pastor Dow, I think you're an angry man. Yeah, I know. I've been accused of a lot of stuff. Hmm? Jude, read, brother Saint. Watch this. First verse. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. I can't say Jude chapter 3. <laughs> I know, brother. It was a good, good joke put in there, though. Read on, brother. And brother of James. To them which that are sanctified by Yah. No, 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 no. These that are sanctified by who? Yah the Father. All right, read on. See, you people are sanctified. Hallelujah. By Yah the Father. And there are people out there that are sincerely following us as we follow me as I follow Christ. They're with us in this. These are sanctified by the Father. Huh? That's why we got to extend this tabernacle out that way. Because we, we done been in here in two meetings in a row, three of them. <laughs> like starting, stand up, bro, say, I mean, stand up, bro, Juan. We up here. We in worship service. Oh, glory be to y'all. <laughs> glory be to y'all. And they're beating each other after death. Standing room only. Thank you, bro, Juan. You ain't offended all me. Oh, you, brother. Okay, good. Read, bro, say. And preserved in Jesus Christ. You are what? Preserved, preserved in Yahshua Hamashiach. You, you see, you're sanctified and you're preserved. Read on. And called. And what? Called. Come on. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Man, you can't ask for no better words than that. I receive every one of them. Read on. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. The common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you mm -hmm. and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. What makes me more upset than anything about saints? Because they're not earnestly contending for the faith. They're acting like a bunch of lazy sluggards. You think about it, the majority of things I get mad at is because people are not walking in this walk like they should. Correct me if I'm wrong. You won't ever see me get mad because you ain't doing what you should be doing. Oh, hallelujah. Read on. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Now, wait a minute. These people are certain men. What do they do? Crept in unawares. <laughs> Read on. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Now notice what they were ordained to. They came in right. to be condemned. Yeah. They came in to be condemned. There are people that come here to be condemned. They come here to be condemned. Hey, I'm still in the faith. I got stripes. I got bruises, broken bones, and everything else. I'm still in the faith. Read on. Unkind. Mother Stalin's, you still in the faith. 84 years old and you still in the faith? Mother Stalin's getting ready to say, I don't fall a good fight. Now Jesus quit wasting time. This world's crazy. <laughs> Read on. Ungodly men. Un what man? Ungodly men. You see the character of them. Their nature is ungodly. Read on. Turning the grace of our Yah into lascivious. That means they go out and practice sin without shame. They give you a license of sin. You just go ahead and it's just, it's just free. It's unbridled. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Go where you want to go. Be what you want to be. They're abusing Yahshua's grace. Yeah, they are. They're saying that everything that they do is sanctioned by the Messiah. Read on. 
and denying the only Yahweh thy Elohim and his son Jesus Christ. But the truth is they're really denying them. Amen. Come on. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though ye once knew this, how that Yahshua, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Now notice, why does he go all the way back to Egypt again? How many times do we always go back to Egypt? Pastor, I'm sick and tired of going to Egypt. We're in America. Well, you're in Egypt again. How about that? Read on. <laughs> and the angels, which kept not their first estate, uh -huh. but left their own habitation, Re yep. he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Y'all hearing that? Come on. Even at Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. They gave themselves over to what? Fornication. America's giving themselves over to what? Fornication. Read on. And going after strange flesh. Come on. Are set forth at forth an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Whew. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers. These filthy what? Dreamers. dreamers. Come on. Defile the flesh. They do, they do what with the flesh? Defile the flesh. Read on. Despise dominion. They despise authority. That's what dominion is. They despise the government of Yah that he set up. Because they believe themselves to be the government. So they despise the government of Yah. Hmm? Read on. And speak evil of dignities. They speak evil of authorities. Pastors and elders and teachers are in the faith. They speak evil of the, the authority to set up. Read on. Yet Michael the archangel. But, and you know what? It's amazing. Michael the archangel. And this is a kicker right here. Read. When contending with the devil. When contending with who? The devil. Watch this. He disputed about the body of Moses. Uh-huh. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation. We know Michael's righteous, right? He didn't even bring a railing accusation against the devil. He just went there to do the job, and he, and he done. Huh? That's the righteous way. Read on. But said, yeah, I'll rebuke thee. Isn't that something? I had, I had a man come in and tell me the most I going to do something about that pride. And then he thought that the most I was going to use him to do something about the pride. That is a devil. Is that how Michael the archangel would have responded when contending with the devil? No, he just said, y'all rebuked you. Isn't that right? Uh-oh. We're in a mess. See what happened? Everybody's spiritual today. Everybody's spiritual. <laughs> Read on. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. They speak evil of things they don't even know. You know why? Because it's all concocted in the spirit of their own mind. They listening to the wrong spirit. Read on. But what they know naturally. How they know it? As brute beasts. They naturally. trying to use selective deduction in the way you would do stuff naturally. And come up with a spiritual answer. Come on, the devil is a lie. Amen. Read on. As brute beasts. As they what? As brute beasts. Brute beasts. Come on. In those things they corrupt themselves. So, see? What do they do? Corrupt themselves. Come on. <laughs> Woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain. The, the, the way of what? Cain. What did Cain do? He slew his brother. He slew his brother. <laughs> That's the way that they're in. Read. And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. What was Balaam doing? I want you to curse Israel. Huh? They were that king. I, I, you come and curse. I can't curse him and curse. But so Balaam was greedy of gain. Read on. And perished in the gainsaying of Korah. He was one of the main instigators. They got that earth opened up. Come on. These are spots in your feast of charity. They are spots in your feast of charity. See, you sitting here getting the smorgasbord, getting your soul filled, 
and getting closer and growing in grace and in the knowledge of Yahshua Hamashik, but these boogers are seeking to put a cockroach in your meal. How's it like that? Come on. When they feast with you. When they feast with you, come on. Feeding themselves without fear. Feeding themselves. Have you ever seen some of them? They got crazy looks, man. They sitting there look. They'll be sitting there feeding them. You look. <laughs> you get around them, and all of a sudden, stand up, bro. Juan. You get around them, and you go. You go. You even try to just be a good Israelite to them. You walk up to me, go. You go. Oh, and you try to fake <laughs> what you feel spiritually. And so you give a church hug. <laughs> Say a church hug. Church, church hug. Yeah, you don't get too much on. You just, you know, one of them church, church hug. Yeah, they get it from the other side. Church hug. See? See how far back? Church hug. <laughs> Come on. Clouds they are without water. Clouds without water. Ain't got a drop of the Holy Spirit. Read on. Carried about of winds. See, what? What winds? Winds of doctrine. Winds of false teachings. Read on. Trees whose fruit withereth. Tw fruit is what? Withereth. And you're supposed to be a good fruit, right? Amen. Isn't that right? But these fruit are withering. They're dying. Read on. Without fruit. Twice dead. Twice what? Twice dead. You know what that twice dead is, right? You know what that twice dead is? I'm going to tell you what that twice dead is. See, you were once dead in your sins. And trespasses. And then after you repent of your sins, your, your spirit becomes alive to Yah. Become recognized, you know, you start to fear him, start keeping his commandments. You get filled with the Holy Spirit. And then next thing you know, you grieve him. And next thing you know, you're dead again. Twice dead. Twice dead. And not only twice dead, but plucked up by the roots. By the roots. Uh oh, you come from a spiritual dead state when you didn't know the Messiah. You walk in and for a little period of time, and then you dead again. You return back to the life of sin. And while you're there to make yourself feel better, you justify yourself in your evil, wicked ways. Because you ain't gonna have nobody correcting you, reproving you, or instructing you, or telling you anything. Don't worry about it. You ain't going to have man to tell you. You ain't going to have God to tell you. But you will be told. Read on. Raging waves of the sea. <laughs> what, are, what kind of waves are they? Raging waves. This is some type of description, isn't it? Read on. Foaming out their own shame. Foaming out their own shame. Come on. Wandering star. I had somebody the other day tell me, you know that Sister Carol, you know that Carol and Cindy got a close relationship. Yeah, they sisters. But they ain't enough. She got a swimming pool and a TV. <laughs> you ever heard of a crying saying, brother? <laughs> You ever heard of crying? Shame, brother. I mean, crying. Help me, brother James. Help me, brother. Pat me on the back, brother. Console me. God. Father, you, it can't be this demonic. It ain't no way. It can't be this demonic. Help me, brother. I told you, natural retardation, you can't do nothing about. But spiritual retardation, y'all getting it? Did I quote that right? Yeah, okay, read on. To whom is reserved the blackness and darkness forever. See, they got a special place reserved for them. They came to be condemned, and now they got a place reserved for them. Read on. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam. He's the seventh from Adam. Enoch, read on. Prophesied of these, saying. What did Enoch prophesy? 
Behold, Yeshua cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Not millions. What did the Bible say? So all you secret rapture fools are liars. I told you there ain't 12,000 people in America that's going to be redeemed. It's not going to happen. Notice, 12,000 sealed out of each tribe. 12,000 is sealed out of what? Out of, out of each tribe. How many tribes are there? 12 tribes. Is that right? Equal to how much? 144,000. And read that verse again, Brother Shane. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, he knew something. He prophesied. Read on. Prophesied of these, saying, Behold, Yeshua cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Not millions, or billions, or trillions. He's coming with ten thousands of his saints. So as soon as you start getting them to the millions, wipe that mess out of your mind. Let the Bible speak. So you better be doing whatever you can to strive to enter in at the straight gate and stop playing around with your little sorry soul. One more time, Brother Shane, for clarification, let's put the nail in. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, Yeshua cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Do you think that they know how to count? You think that they could count up to a million even back then? I mean, they were more intelligent than we were now. Somebody lying again, ain't they? That's a, that's a, that's a knock the ball out of the park right there, brother. my routine hey, well, you gotta have a routine we get up to bat everybody watching you <laughs> my favorite one was this one <laughs> you know what they're saying right hey, I'm finna knock it out of the park <laughs> Read. To execute judgment. Uh oh. Upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly <laughs> among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. Hey, a lot of people getting ready to get judged, ain't they? He's coming with 10,000 saints to execute judgment. We know it's during this time frame that we're in right now. Read on. And of all their hard speeches. What, the what kind of speeches? Hard speeches. I mean, people say some hard stuff about me, brother. Amen. Hard stuff. They say some hard stuff about you, too. Because you're guilty by association. Amen. Read on. Which ungodly sinners have spoken against Which ungodly you. sinners have spoken. Y'all see the nature here? Y'all yeah. didn't know all this was in this book, didn't you? Read on. These are murmurers. They are what? Murmurers. See the nature? Yeah. What else? Complainers. What? 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 Complainers. Boy, they got it. Who is that character of? Read on. Walking after their own lust. How do they walk? After their own lust. Read. And their mouth speaking great swelling words. Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. They're only looking for an advantage with men. Right. Read on. But beloved... Remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our master Jesus Christ. Uh huh. How that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time. When is the mockers going to come? In the last time. Are we in the last time? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, read on. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust? Y'all hearing this? So people are actually walking after their own ungodly lust. Read. These be they... Who separate themselves. They, what, are they, what is one of their natures? Separating themselves. What do they do? Separate themselves. Talk to us apostles. What do they do? Separate themselves. What else do they do? Sensual. They sensual. Having not the spirit. They ain't got a drop of the Holy Ghost. Huh? 
Saints, are we not striving to enter in at straight gate? Yes. Yes. Are we not really striving to enter in? Are we not doing all that we can, running hard as we can to the Messiah? Yes or no? Yes. Why do you want to separate from us? The only way you could do that is because you sense when you don't have the spirit. There could be no other reason. Not unless the way is too straight and too narrow. Even at that, you still see us when don't have the Spirit. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit going to keep you on the way. Amen. Read on. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Read. Keep yourselves in the love of Yah. Looking for the mercy of our Master Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some having compassion making a difference. And others save with fear. Doing what? Pulling them out of the fire. I'm trying to pull people out of the fire, brother. I try my best to pull people out of the fire. Read on. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. I got folks fighting me while they run into the fire. I here I am trying to grab a hold of them by their garments up to keep them from the fire, and they're punching me on their way down. Read on. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. That's him. That's him. Yahshua Hamashik. Amen. Come on. And to present you faultless. He's the only one that can present you faultless. He's the only one that can do that. Read on. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Yah, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. I mean. Y'all to read Jude. Y'all to spend some time meditating on Jude because he lets us know what we're dealing with. Michael 2.11, read, brother Shane. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood the do spirit, lie. The spirit of falsehoods and do lie. Y'all hear that? So a person that is a liar is a person that is walking in the spirit of falsehoods. Are right, you following me? All right. He, we're making war with the saints, okay? Daniel 7.21, read that, brother Shane. I beheld... And some horn made war with the saints. The same horn made a war with the saints. Read on. And prevailed against them. So you got a beast system, an enemy that's going to be warring and fighting against us until the king comes. Revelation 13, verse 7 and 8. Read, Brother Shane. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Isn't that something? Y'all hear that, right? So he's going to make war with who? Second Corinthians 2.5. We're going to talk about our enemy down to verse 11. Read, Brother Shane. But if any have caused grief. Y'all hearing this? If any have caused grief, read. He hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Y'all hearing that? So I do experience grief in part. Because so when I tell people, no, it don't bother me none, in part it does, but it doesn't as a whole. Because I ain't got time for all that stuff. You follow? And neither should you. Read on. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many. So that contrary wise, you ought rather to forgive him uh -huh. and comfort him. Lest. Lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. Now what happened here is people got put in context. This was the man that had an illicit relationship with his father's wife. And the church was, was being staunch and hard and not letting this man come back in. And so this man is repenting, but they're like, oh, oh, oh wait a minute. So when they, when they kicked him out, they booed him hard. And when he wanted to come back, they were still booting hard. But this man had sincere, he met the, the conditions of repentance. And they was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. And Paul said, man, you people going to have to lighten up a little bit. This man's repent, turn from his wicked way. You need to receive him up. And back in, because if you don't, Satan going to swallow him up with all much sorrow, man. He wants, he desires fellowship with you. Read on. Wherefore I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. Confirm your love. That's pretty hard, isn't it? Read on. For to this end also did I write, that I may know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. Because some people, man, you just want to, man, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm not fooling with that, man. Paul said, I'm going to find out if you're going to be obedient if this person meeting the conditions. You've got to forgive him and restore him. Read on. To whom ye forgave anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, 
to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. You ever did this to people? Oh, I forgive you, but it's in Christ. See, what you're doing, you're being a liar. Because what you truly ain't doing, you ain't forgiving them. Not from your heart. That's why he's still messed up today. Now, when he says, to whom I forgave anything, I gave him the person of Christ. Yep, yeah, if you experience injury close like it, it does hurt. And all forgiveness do come from Christ. But you better do it with a sincere heart. Don't be playing no games. Read, brother, say. Lest Satan. There he is again. Lest who? Satan. Do what? Should get an advantage of us. Uh-huh. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Second Corinthians 11, verse 10. Read, Brother Shane, through verse 15. Read. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting. Man, in the Paul got to stop talking about this boldness, this boasting. What's wrong with him? Every time I turn around, he's boasting, he's bold. I don't think nothing wrong with him at all. I think he's right on point as a man of Yah. Read on. In the regions of Achaia. Wherefore? Because I... You, because I love you not, Yah knoweth. Come on. But what I do that I will do that I may cut off occasion from them which desire oh, occasion. Oh, y'all hear that? So Paul said, now wait a minute. I'm doing certain things, and what I do, let me put it in modern day terms, okay? Mind your own business. Because Paul said, what I'm do, I am doing, but I'm doing it for a reason, because I'm going to cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. Read on. That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Look at the description. For such are false apostles. And. Deceitful workers. And. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Uh-huh. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. <coughs> Therefore, it is no great thing if his man, ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and go to Psalms 109 again and verse, read verse 16 through 22. Um, I'm going to give you all some passages I want you all to read for the sake of time. But what you're getting ready to do or we're getting ready to read, you're getting ready to read how our people dealt with people who was against their person and how they prayed and how they spoke. All right. I'm going to read Psalms 109, verse 16 through 22. Because he that remembered not to show not mercy, notice he remembered to show not mercy, but persecuted the poor and the needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he have loved cursing, look at this, so let it come unto him, as he have delight of not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he have clothed himself with cursing, like as with a garment, so let it, it come into his bowels like water, and like all into his bones. Everything and every evil that somebody means against you, David is saying, everything that they say and they mean, let it come back on them. He's not cursing. He's rescinding. He's sending back the curses. He's saying, I don't want this. Y'all getting that? What he's doing, he's putting up his shield of flake and he's deflecting all the fiery darts of the devil. That's what he's doing. Huh? Verse 19. And let it be unto him as a garment which covered him, and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Let this be the reward of mine adversaries from Yahweh, and let them that speak evil against my soul. Y'all hear that? Ooh, speak evil against his what? But do thou for me, O Yahweh, the master, for my name's sake, for thy name's sake, excuse me, because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. David is asking to be delivered from these people. And who is he petitioning? The Father. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. Psalms chapter 7, verses 10. I'm going to read on down to verse 17. My defense is Yah, which saveth the upright in heart. Yah judges the righteous, and Yah is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will welt his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death and ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travelled with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit 
and he digged it and has fallen into the ditch which he made. His mistress shall return upon his own head and his violence dealing shall come down upon his own plate. Y'all hearing this? I will praise Yahweh according to his righteousness and I will sing to the name of the Most High Yah. Isn't that beautiful? Nehemiah 4 verses 1 through 6. But it come to pass in the day of Shinnabat heareth that we built a wall and it was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and before the army of Samaria and said what do these feeble Jews notice they notice that they're sentiment to these weak people will they fortify themselves will they sacrifice will they make an end of the day you know that? I mean come on are they going to call on their God are they going to build up a position are they going to protect themselves will they relieve um, with the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish that are burnt now Tobiah and the Amorite was by him and said and he said look even that which they built, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Tell me how weak it is. Here, O oh our master, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey into the land of their captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee for, thou hast provoked, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Here we are building this kingdom, and we got wicked people want to come and tear it down. They even mocking us and laughing us, saying we ain't nothing but a weak and feeble-minded people. Well, you're going to find out that we anything other than that. Nehemiah verses 1 through 3, and on that day, when they read the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein have found written that the Amorite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of Yah forever because they met not the children of Israel with bread and water but hired Balaam against them that he should curse them how be it our master turn the curse into a blessing what did Yah do every voice rise up in judgment against you you condemn everything they bring a curse they heaping more blessings upon us and it got come to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. They got rid of all these heathens away from them. Psalms 9.9. 9, Yahweh also will be my refuge for the day of oppression, a refuge in the time of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Yahweh, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to Yahweh which dwell in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he make when he maketh an inquisition for blood, he remembered them, he forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me, that thou liftest up my up from my <clears throat> the gates of the death, that I may show forth all thy praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, and in the net which they he it is their own foot taken. Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the works of his own hand. Haganayan Salah. Psalms 35 verses 1 through 9. A psalm of David. Plead my cause, O Yahweh, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of the shield and the buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also a spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame to seek after my soul. And let them return back and forth to confusion that devises my hurt. Let them be as the chaff before the wind and let the angel of Yahweh chase them let their way be dark and slippery and let um, the angel of Yahweh persecute them for without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit which without cause they have dig for my soul let destruction come up on him at unawares and let his net that he have hid catch himself into that very destruction let him fall and my soul shall be joyful in Yahweh, and I shall rejoice in, this, in thy salvation. Last two. Psalm 70, verse 1. The chief musician, Psalm of David, bring more remembrance. Make haste, O Yah, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Yahweh. Let them 
that be ashamed and confounded, that seek after my soul, let them be turned backwards and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, Aha, aha. Let those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee, and let as such as love thy salvation say continually, Let Yahweh be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O Yah. Thou art my help and my deliverer, O Yah. Make no tearing. Psalms 109, verse 17. Again, finished on this. As he have loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delight of not in blessing, so let it be far from him. So there's nothing wrong with returning curses to the sender. A lot of times when you're feeling good and everything is going fine and all of a sudden you feel dread come over you. That's because someone's speaking evil against you. And you need to know that. And so you need to become more discerning of the body, the most highest body. And you need to learn how to send these things back to these people because they're invoking spirits to attack you. And you have to become familiar with the warfare. And the reason why most people you ain't going to hear in other places talking about stuff like this because they don't walk and, and, and they don't live a life in spiritual warfare. They're too busy adopting a hands-off attitude against every wicked and foul spirit that is operating today. Nobody got demons. We're not under fire. You are the enemy. They the enemy. But the devil ain't the enemy. I don't take that. I know that the devil is a spirit as well. And so is his demonic spirits, disembodied spirits. And they're looking for residents and hosts to take up in. And we do got a war. We got a fight that we're fighting against not only devils, but, but people who are being used of the devil. And people who are serving the devil. And the people who submit to the devil. So Israel, you need to arise and let your enemies be scattered. You need to develop a good conscience towards this word and know that you're in hostile environment until the new Jerusalem come down. So until then, we're in exile. Jerusalem is still being trodden down of the Gentiles, the enemies, and we're waiting on our Messiah to come and redeem us, to bring us by us back, hallelujah, so we can rule and reign with him on this earth. Hallelujah. And with that, I say shalom. Father, we thank you for these words of truth. Pray these saying, seek deep down in our hearts in the mighty name of Yahshua. Amen. Bless y'all. Y'all be encouraged out there in internet land. The king coming. Uh-oh, look at him looking.